I'm a couple of hours into me session. I'm down at Linear Fisheries on Hardwick and uh, we just fancied coming on here this time of year. Not many people seem to fish this lake as much as they should. Um, there's some brilliant features out here as well and been fishing for about well, about three hours now. I've got set up, put a little bit of bait out. I'm into my first carp already. So uh, things are looking pretty promising really. Feels like a decent fish. Good fish, that. Huh? Oh, hello. Oh, quite pleased with that one. Looks a pretty decent fish, to be fair. Oh. I thought we were going to start with a few smaller ones, but we've uh, gone straight in there with a bit of a tank. Well, a touch over 27 pound. That's a brilliant start to the session. I've been fishing about three hours. And uh, to catch a fish like this, I would have been happy if this would have been the uh, been the end result of a few fish. But to start with this is pretty is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so just goes to prove as well that the way I'm fishing for them is mega instant um, for autumn and even through the winter. It's, it is really effective the way I'm going to be fishing, and I caught this using maggots. But it's getting dark now, so I'm going to get this one back, get my rod sorted, get a bit more bait out there as well. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll uh, get a few more of these and we'll go through exactly how to do some proper maggot fishing. Just down there, you can see a swan. Um, just getting this bait out for the night after I caught that fish and straight away started spotting especially maggots because they sink quite slow the swans uh, they're straight on it so uh, tip number one is get him down in the edge you've really got to throw a couple of uh, bits of food in every now and again for him but for all the while he sat there he's not absolutely pillaging your bait when he's coming out the old spot it's something I've done for quite a few years now as well because they can absolutely smash a spot load of bait in within, well, within seconds before it could even fall down through the water the length of their neck. So, uh, yeah, just a couple of couple of bits of bait every now and again, and he'll stay there and not not bother you where you're putting your bait in. After I caught that 27 pounder just before dark yesterday, I mean, I thought I would have caught another one to be fair, but I haven't. Went through the night biteless. Um, heard a show or two out in the, in the main area of the lake where I'm fishing. Um, but I have just seen a fish show down the edge. So I've just wound in one of the rods off the bait and uh, chucked a solid bag where I've seen the fish show. Uh, but I am keeping the faith in the maggots. I know they're going to do me good. Uh, they always do. So, uh, but talking of maggots, I just want to show you you know how I sort of keep my maggots fresh. Like I see a lot of people struggle, especially through the warmer months, how they look after their maggots. And uh, to me, I think from a match fishing background, it's important to look after the bait that I'm going to be using. Um, and the best thing I can suggest to keep your maggots, rather than have a bucket with a load of holes stabbed in the top where the air gets in and then they keep them moving around and they can sweat out then. They, I mean, they produce a lot of ammonia when they're moving around. 
um, I keep them in an airtight bucket so this is sealed and they go torpid and they look a little bit a little bit stretched but when you take you know when you put them in the bucket they actually start coming back to life and they go back to how, uh, how they were the, originally so just keep them in a keep them in a nice airtight bucket and you can see there that you know they're not moving at all and then the next thing is when you you know especially carp anglers when you buy them in bulk from tackle shops they come in the sawdust um, a lot of the tackle shops they won't actually prepare the maggots for you as they, they would for the match anglers so just get yourself a little riddle and then whatever amount of maggots you're going to use you can just riddle all the sawdust off you know they're nice and clean now and whereas a, a match angler would use maize flour that you know the, the little yellow powder to to make them all uh, all nice and fluffy i actually just use some krill meal um, i've seen a lot of match anglers do really well on this and what they do is they uh, they just cover their maggots in this krill meal and uh, to be fair i've been using it for a couple of years now and it, it adds like a really nice aroma to the maggots it certainly doesn't do them any harm at all it's just enhancing them further again so that's the maggots all prepared um, I'm going to fire a few more spots out into the lake just on the spot just to create a bit of interest uh, the water's quite deep and the fish can be sometimes up in the water moving around so I'm going to uh, pop a few of these out and hopefully that will uh, get a response or two from the fish Well, I sat there waiting for something to happen and uh, it wasn't. And I've just heard a fish behind me. We're on a spit here on Ardwick and uh, there's like actually like another lake behind us. Um, I've heard one show, so I've wound in, I've gone for a walk around, I've climbed a tree and I've actually seen the waters, like in this side, the water's crystal clear and in that side, the water's slightly coloured. Uh, I've seen a couple of fish cruising around as well. So I think, um, you know, it doesn't matter what tactic you use, like you will not catch what isn't there that's like the basics of carp fishing so you know as good as the maggots are if they're not there I'm not going to catch them so I'm going to um I'm going to take the gamble I'm going to pack up and I'm going to go and spend the uh I'm going to go and spend the night up there where hopefully I can show you what the maggots really do so yeah let's go and uh go and have a go been in this for about five minutes now. Um, I've literally unloaded, well, just got my rods off the barrow. I've chucked a couple of little zigs on and uh, just chucked them out into this bay. Like when I went up the tree, there was a couple of fish cruising around. They were, like, they were deep, but they were cruising around, actively swimming around. And where there was one, there was, you know, like another one behind it following. So, um, yeah, I've just pinged out two little zigs just out there. But what I'm going to do now is, you know, I want to I want to fish on the bottom, get something going really. Um, so I'm going to have a quick look more out in the open water just for a, uh, a little spot. I'm just looking for a nice clean, clean area just to present this bait. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a couple of chucks and uh, see what we can find. I've had a couple of chucks with this lead. I just got a bare lead on a uh, on a braided line, and uh, I've used this to feel around. I felt around for a, a hard donk, um, and once I found that, what I've done is I've searched that area, clipped it up on the spool, used the tree in the background, and just searched around that area. And what I found is that where this hard patch is, is that I mean, from what I can gather, it is pretty much polished gravel. Um, it is absolutely solid. There's no weed or nothing. Whereas around it, if you cast like a couple of meters to the left and right, it is sort of feels like Canadian weed, probably four, six inches high. Um, and yeah, so that, like to me, that's pretty, that's pretty obvious where I want to be fishing. Uh, and another thing, I can present my bait on that spot like an absolute dinner plate, and they can come in. Um, and also to the right, 
it's slightly deeper as well. So I, I, you know, what I can gather is a bit of a hump. Um, and with the fish being up in the water from seeing them in the tree, I think this is, you know, this is going to be a prime spot to uh, to try and nick a bite or two. So I'm going to get a bit of bait in on that spot, um, not too much, and uh, see if we can get a couple of bites. Well, once I found that spot out in the lake, I uh, clipped it up on the spool. I've put my marker sticks out. I've wrapped it round. Unfortunately, it's 11 wraps exactly. So uh, I've clipped up a couple of rods to 11, 11 wraps, put a little elastic marker on there. Um, I'm just doing my spod rod now, and it's over 10 foot deep out in the lake. And my personal um, preference is I clip up my spod one foot shorter for every three foot of water. So I've clipped my spod rod up you know, nearly, nearly three foot shorter than 11 wraps. And this will allow for the, uh, for the swing back on the leads and my bait is going to be falling bang over the top of my rigs. So uh, yeah, let's fire a bit of bait out now. Well, you see me uh, putting that bait out on the spot that we found. Just before I was going to chuck my rods out, I just had a scout at the margin and I actually climbed a tree that I hadn't climbed previously. And at the base of the tree, there's a nice little clear spot and there were a few carp sort of milling about. So I got some maggots, put them on the spot, went back 10 minutes later and there's um, a couple of fish feeding. So I've just got a, uh, just got a little rig now, basically a solid bag rig, um, little inline drop off, a little bit of pink plastic corn, just because the water's actually quite coloured now. So hopefully they'll be able to pick that out and just, just a little bag of pellets. Um, so I'm gonna go and creep through the bush, drop this on the spot and uh, fingers crossed, go and catch myself a carp. So uh, let's go and have a go. jungle warfare going on but um what an opportunity seen a couple of fish what was that three or four minutes and uh yeah feels all right actually to be fair i'm just gonna wade down to a nice safe place to land her Well, we were sat over there, and uh, no, I'd just come round. Had a look in this margin. There some fish on this spot, put a few maggots on there, and it just goes to show how instant these maggots are, especially this time of year. And uh, that rod was in the water for three or four minutes maximum. Um, threw a few maggots in just to get them to go off the spot, but obviously they're interested in the maggots, so you've got to be quick. Got the rig in there. Got the rig in there pretty quick. Just sat at home, waited a couple of minutes, and uh, yeah, she nearly pulled my arm off. Bag. Just goes to show, like, you know, we sat over there for a night, nothing was really happening. Um, I think as carp anglers, we're all guilty to formulating a plan before we go somewhere. And you do, you get it in your head what you want to do and how you want to be fishing, but, you know, just goes to show that at all times, be prepared to change, you know, and fish, fish how the fish want to be fished for, you know? They're telling you what they want, they're in the edge, they're feeding on little spots. Um, and we've fished accordingly and we've caught one straight away so there's always something to be learned with carp fishing i think that's the beauty of it
made up of that. Um, I don't stalk many fish, so to stalk this one out the edge is it's quite nice for me. Um, probably about 18 pounds. I'm not going to weigh her, but uh, what, a, uh, what a lovely carp and a lovely way to catch her. Um, pretty uneventful night. Uh, I was proper confident that we were going to catch off the bait last night, but it hasn't happened for whatever reason. That's carp fishing. The fish have been mega active. They've boshed all night. I've been up, walking about. I've been watching them and watching them and watching them and catching none of them. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's been emotional. I've seen a good fish show just behind my bait, probably 10 yards behind my bait, so I'm going to leave those rods be. Um, I've baited some spots in the margin in case we get an opportunity like yesterday uh, to stalk one. And I've chucked some zigs at these fish, I've chucked some single look baits, I've chucked some bags. I've done, well, I've gone through the old textbook of carp fishing and got zero for it. Um, going to see what's going to happen today. But yeah, it's been it's been pretty frustrating to be fair. So uh, doing my head in. <laughs> well yeah, we'll uh we'll keep plodding away, keep seeing uh seeing if we can get a chance. Just gonna have a quick look at the rigs that I've caught the fish on. Uh, they're super simple rigs, but they are actually really effective. The 27 pounder that we caught, I actually caught that one on a uh, a 360 rig. Some people think this is quite a controversial rig. Um, I don't. Uh, I know, well, I know a lot of good anglers that catch a lot of big fish on these rigs, um, and we use them in a, in a super safe way. It's just a uh, little length of 25 pound rigidity, a uh, size 11 ring swivel, that's a size 6 LSC, a couple of hook beads on there, and then I use a blob method to attach the hook bait with a little uh, rig ring swivel. Um, one thing I do do is I put a bit of shrink tube just over the eye of the hook. Any uh, controversy about this rig is due to the eye of the hook catching in the net. It's nothing to do with when you're playing a fish, it's just when the rig itself is actually in the landing net. So um, just a tip for if you are going to use this rig, when you net the fish, make sure when you scoop the fish up in the net, you lift the net up nice and high, the fish will go right to the bottom of the net and just be careful when you remove the fish from the water. That is when the damage is done, nothing to do with the rig when you're actually either hooking the fish or playing the fish. 
So just be careful. If you're worried, put it in a sling, make sure you roll the net down nice and just check the hook hold or even unhook it in the water and you'll be absolutely fine. I've used this rig for years and not caused a problem at all. Um, so yeah, so and it is a super effective big fish rig this. Um, I've caught hundreds of big fish on this. The, uh, the next rig, this is the one that I caught the 18 pounder on at the edge. And this is probably caught me the most fish throughout my whole fishing career. Um, this is just a simple solid bag rig. It's four inches of 25 pound reflex braid. A uh, little blob of putty on the hook link there. Bit of silicon over the eye of the hook. That's a size six SSBP. Little rig rings um, on the shank of the hook. And just a single grain of plastic sweet corn. Um, a little, this is a three ounce lead just because we're fishing a short distance out here. Or I'll use this this weight up to sort of four, even four and a half ounces sometimes. Um, but it is mega effective. This goes into a uh, into a PVA bag using the Rapide system. And yeah, this has caught me more fish than any other rig that I've ever used. And it's brilliant for, especially for how we're fishing here, where we're fishing on very hard spots. You cannot present a bait better than what you can do it in this bag here. It is, you know, the fish come in, especially when we're fishing maggots on a hard area, they come in and they hoover these maggots up. They sit very low to the bottom. And as soon as, this is sat in a little pile of pellets, and as soon as they suck this in, it's, it's game over and you've got yourself a, uh, you've got yourself a carp. Um, I seen how effective it was yesterday with my own eyes watching it in the edge. I lowered it in and as soon as the fish went over the top of the rig, that was it, bang, first time I've caught it. So those are the two rigs that I've, I'm using for probably 90% of my angling at the moment. They're mega effective and uh, super efficient. Well, this bay kind of looks devoid of fish now. Um, been sitting here, you know, hoping and hoping nothing's happened. I've walked up around the corner there where I can see across the lake and I've stood there for about two minutes and a fish has plumped his head out, bang over the spot that I was fishing uh, the first night, which is typical. Um, I've still got my line markers on my rod, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to camp down, I'm going to take the rods around there, just finish off the last few hours, fishing back where I started, uh, see if I can catch that little devil that thought he was getting away with a free munch. But yeah, so that's, that's the plan now, and hopefully nick a bite before we, uh, before we head off. Well, no more bites. Um, it's been a bit of a struggle, to be honest. But, I mean, I was made up at the start. I had that 27 pounder, which is, as a fish of a session anyway. You know, I've caught that. Um, I've actually stalked a fish as well. Um, I haven't done that up at Linear Fisheries for quite some time. So that was, pretty, uh, that was a pretty special moment. But across the whole lake, over the last, uh, I think five or six days, it actually hasn't done a bite to another angler, um, which just goes to show that the maggots have definitely been an edge because although it seemed like we caught the fish sort of relatively easy at the time, it just goes to show, you know, what the right bait at the right time of year does. So uh, I made up with what I've caught for, for how the lake's actually fishing at the minute. Um, 
yeah, I'll be back to catch them again another day, no doubt.